After 21 years of neglect, countless promises of next time, and a father who wasn't always around but swore in his bank account, the only God he has that I better be here today. I robbed my grandma's hospital bed. I used to pull the sheets over my head when I was afraid. Now I'm terrified of what's beneath them. A scarecrow crucified on wooden bones and tattered skin. Her voice sounds like crumpled paper. Two bright red lanterns wrinkled beneath her breastplates. She smiles. Pain. Her lips clawing away from her teeth like soldiers retreating from a true front war and they just want to smell a home-cooked meal again. Bob says she recognizes me. He's always been a clever liar. She has Alzheimer's, and I haven't seen her since I can still hold my age in my right and left hands. Strong as she is, her brain is absent as I have been. How do you cry for a stranger? Visiting hours are for friends and family. This feels more like hospice care. Long ago, my father dragged me to a convalescent home, where I played hide and seek with pale day zombies, ravenous for human flesh and anything warm that would touch them, a hand a cup of coffee, or her last memory of the sun. Once upon a time, the Great Wall of China ran up her spine. Rumor has it you can still see this wonder from the moon. That's just urban legend. Trust me, I watched her farther away. From the outside of the casket and the front seat of a rental car, she laid to rest in Monterey. I can't say Steinbeck ever walked this cemetery, but I felt guilty of every sin east of his ear. We had the ceremony in the church. Not because we're good Christians, that's just what people do. It was just me, my father, and a priest paid by the hour. No mass requiem, no bouquet of white lilies, no Ave Maria sung by a woman wearing the only little black dress she'll never want to wear again. Just prayers. Read off of paper sheets folded like fast food menus. Hands like mantis, eyes up, ears out. Hadn't heard a real name until the undertaker read it in Chinese off the tombstone. A shotgun funeral, fitting for a life that ran from bullets. She put her past behind, only for me to forget her until she passed. It's only now I realize. I should have loved her, the lotus she was. A flower that blooms from the mud but remains unstained. Grandma. I am so sorry. If I ever had the chance to make it right, find myself in the Hunan province of the Chinese countryside, I will craft this poem into a fleet of origami boats, place a, place a candle on each, and sail my one-man navy of flames down the Yangtze River until the ghosts know that my grandmother's face launched a thousand ships, and I intend to bring her back. This is an Iliad, penned on the inside of a paper lantern. It illuminate her stories into the night. Amen. <laughs>